Hey guys and welcome to my channel. My name is Ella and today I'm going to be taking a first look at macOS Big Sur. Okay, so I just downloaded macOS Big Sur onto my laptop because I just read about all of the new standout features of this update and it seems like a lot of things have changed so I am very excited to check it out. In this video, I will bring you guys along with me as I take my first look at macOS Big Sur and of course I will be letting you guys know my honest thoughts and opinions on this new update. Alright, and let's just get right on into it. Okay, so we've zoomed out a bit and now let's take a look at Big Sur. Okay, so the very first thing that I see is obviously the desktop background and I have to say I like the Catalina one better. I love the Catalina photograph and I especially loved how with the Catalina background it changed depending on the time of the day. So you could see Catalina at sunrise, in the middle of the day, at sunset, at night. I thought that was so cool. And for this background, I don't really think there is a feature like that. I mean, like, I don't know if this background will look any different at sunrise versus like the middle of the day. I mean, we can take a look. Hmm, okay, so we have light. Oh, okay. And then we have dark. Oh, okay, interesting. So this is the dark one and this is the light one. But now I do see that there are other ones. Oh, okay, so you can change it to like other um, Big Sur screensavers. I would imagine driving on this highway, like that would be so beautiful. Okay, so this is a little bit of a tangent, but I am living in Vancouver and in Vancouver there is the Sea to Sky Highway and this really reminds me of the Sea to Sky Highway. Okay, so it looks like I can still have the Catalina background, which is cool because you know, I do really love Catalina. Um, there is this new one. Oh, okay, this one is interesting. Oops, let me turn it on to light. Okay, so it looks like this is like a 2D version of Big Sur. Very, very cool, although I do like the real photograph more. Let's take a look at this one, the lake. Ooh, okay, this also looks super interesting. I like it. Okay, yeah, so I think with this Big Sur update, you get one like Big Sur real photograph, and then you get um, a couple of like 2D I guess, recreations of um, Big Sur scenery. I know some people will prefer a more like 2D looking desktop picture as opposed to a real photograph, but for me personally, I do like a real photograph more, so I think I'm going to set this as my background. But now let's move on to looking at the app icons. And the very first thing that I noticed is that Launchpad changed completely. Before it was a rocket, and now it changed to this this thing. I don't really know what it is. Okay, so first impressions, the app icons definitely did change. It is a pretty subtle change, but they definitely look a lot more 3D than previously, especially with like FaceTime and messages, like you can really see the shading going on there. Um, I personally am not a huge fan of this 3D design. I think I like the 2D one more. I think it looked a lot more like sleek and modern and then I feel like this 3D design almost looks like kind of old-fashioned so I'm not a huge fan but like honestly this design is very subtle and it's like barely noticeable if you you know don't look at it that hard but let me know down below in the comments if you like like a more 2d looking app design or like the new like 3d looking one okay so i read on the apple website that now in the app store there is a section on safari extensions as well as privacy reports for different apps meaning that like before you download an app you can see what kind of data the app will collect from you okay so first let's take a look at the safari extensions i think it's nice Nice that now in the app store there is a, like a dedicated section to safari extensions now they're like a lot easier to find than before because honestly before i didn't even know they existed so i do think that having a dedicated section is a good choice and i actually already downloaded two safari extensions grammarly and todoist because i did try filming this video before but not with the mic so i had to like kind of start over but anyways, um, in just a moment, I'm going to open up Safari and test out these extensions. And I think out of everything, Safari got like the biggest makeover. Now I'm going to be completely honest, um, I haven't used Safari in like three years or so. I have always used Google Chrome, but I have to say just very first impressions from this homepage, 
Safari looks good. Like previously, Safari didn't really look that good. Like the old design was kind of, well, like old looking, definitely didn't look very modern, very sleek, but I have to say like this, this looks very nice. Okay, so in Safari, I read that we can have a customizable start page and let's just take a look at the available pictures. Ooh, okay, <laughs> interesting. Hmm, very interesting. <laughs> I don't know how I feel about these default background images, but, um, <laughs> is that a panda or like a bear? I think you can like upload your own photos, so that is very cool. Although I am pretty sure that in Google Chrome you could do this too, and it has been an available feature in Chrome for quite some time now. But anyways, it seems like you can uh, customize like what shows up here too. Okay, I have to say this isn't like that much customization. I mean, you really only get these choices. I thought there would be a lot more, but um, yeah. I'm going to check out its tab design, which I also read received a new update. So uh, let's just open up a few, you know, websites. Okay, so it seems like there is this new feature where if I hover over a tab, it shows me a preview of it, which is definitely very helpful, especially if you have a lot of tabs open and you can no longer see the names of the tabs, then, you know, you can like find out which tab you're looking for by doing this hover. I don't think this is a feature that Chrome has, so I have to say, Props the Safari for this one. I do like this feature. I think it is good. All right, and now I really want to check out the Safari extensions that I mentioned in the very beginning. So let's launch Grammarly. Okay, so it looks like this is where the extensions are. We have Grammarly, we have Todoist. Okay, I guess I don't know how to use Todoist, but I would imagine it would work similarly to how like Chrome extensions work. Okay, and the last thing that I'm going to check out about Safari is the privacy report. So again, like Apple is very privacy conscious, so it has this tracker where you can see um, to where you can see, I guess, like what the website is tracking. So two trackers prevented from profiling you. What does that mean? Is it preventing trackers from profiling me? So is it like fighting off data intrusions? Hmm, I'm not sure. All right, okay, so final thoughts on Safari. Definitely, it's a huge revamp from the old Safari. However, I still think I'm gonna be sticking to Chrome because even though it got a huge revamp, like none of the features are like revolutionary except for maybe this um, hover preview thing. That's pretty cool. But other than that, like in Chrome, the feature to change the background has existed for quite a while. Same with Chrome extensions. Like there are so many Chrome extensions available. And even though now Safari is starting to roll out with extensions, I'm sure there are more to choose from for Chrome. So yeah, overall for me, I am going to be sticking to Chrome. <laughs> So anyways, now let's take a look at the control center, which I am very excited about. I think that this is such a good added convenience feature. Okay, so from the control center, it looks like I can very easily access all of these, which I think were part of Catalina. But I see here I can adjust the display brightness right from the control center, which uh, is definitely very convenient. And I can also control the sound, so again, it saves me from like having to like reach over, I can just keep my um, hand on my trackpad. But I think we can also customize the control center, so let's try doing that. Okay, so it looks like I can add the battery. Oh, well, I can also do fast user switching. Okay, I probably wouldn't be doing that because I don't have a second user, but if you like share your laptop with your family or friends or whatever, then um, definitely think that this could be a nice feature. Okay, so in terms of the customization of the control center, um, right now I can't really see any other way to customize it other than adding like these three things. But I do want to take a deeper look at the different ways that you can customize macOS Big Sur and maybe I'll make a video about like ways to customize too. So be sure to subscribe to my channel if you don't want to miss out on future videos. All right, anyways, so control center, definitely very cool, but now let's take a look at the 
notification center, which also got a huge makeover. Now we have these widgets, which are very similar to the widgets on iOS and iPad OS. And I see that we can edit the widgets as well. So we've got a clock. I'm gonna just move it up there because I like to have my clock up. Uh, we have calendar, weather, stocks. I'm gonna delete the stocks. Screen time. Okay. Oh, okay. So we have a folder. So notes folder widget. Okay. Photos, notes widget. Up next for podcasts, reminder list, daily activities, symbols. So it doesn't seem like you have a lot of options with the default widgets, but I am sure that there are like third party widgets that you can add. And I definitely wanna take a look into that to see, you know, like what kind of widgets I can add to help me with like my productivity, my workflow, or just for aesthetic purposes. Okay, and next we're gonna take a look at maps. Okay, so I read about these guides and I just wanna check it out. I really just wanna see like how good they are, I guess. So because I am living in Vancouver, I am like, you know, familiar with things to do around here, so let's take a look to see if they are actually recommending the, you know, the good places. Stanley Park, very good. Stanley Park is so beautiful. Kitsilano Beach, also very good, very beautiful. Coal Harbor, this place is amazing. Uh, the classical Chinese garden, I haven't been there, but I've heard that it is super nice there. Grouse Mountain, um, uh, okay, I've heard that it is a very difficult hike, but it's definitely a very popular thing to do. Queen Elizabeth Park, such a beautiful park, you get a very nice view of Vancouver from this park. These recommendations, I, I endorse, I like. <laughs> okay, and in addition to guides, I also read about these cycling routes. And in Vancouver, like cycling is a very, I guess, popular thing to do, whether as a sport or just as a, you know, like casual activity. And I don't know why like my map isn't fully loading. That's a bit strange to me, but I do want to take a look at the cycling directions. So I just set Kitsilano Beach and Stanley Park. Um, and it says cycling directions not available yet in Vancouver. Oh, that is a big letdown. Okay, okay, so it seems like it's, oh my gosh, wait, flyover? That is really cool. Was this, is this a new feature? Okay, wow, wait, let me full screen this. Okay, the graphics don't look the best. I think this is Lion's Gate Bridge. Yes, that's what it says right there. Um, oh, okay, so I can control this with my track trackpad. Mm, all right. Okay. Uh, I think this is Stanley Park. Yeah, I would have to say the graphics don't look the best. Okay, so the flyover tour really just brought me to, I guess, like the major places of Vancouver, which I don't even think is really cool. Like if you're looking to, you know, explore somewhere or if you're just like curious about a place, like this is a nice way to see it, especially now, like, you know, when we can't really be traveling, like this is a good way to, you know, like virtually travel. Okay, and I think that's going to be it for the maps. I think that the newly added guides are quite nice, and I do like the flyover feature too. It's like, you know, taking a virtual helicopter trip to a city. And I actually do think I might start using Apple Maps more, because before I've always just used Google Maps, but I do really like like the new features that Apple added to Maps, so um, I guess Maps wins for me. Okay, so that is going to be it for this video. Overall, I do like this new update and I'm just hoping that, you know, it won't have a lot of compatibility issues with apps and things like that. I think it's nice how a lot of apps did receive a huge revamp, although I would say like Safari did, you know, get better, but it's still, <laughs> still haven't reached Chrome yet. Anyways, thank you guys so much for watching. Please let me know down in the comments below what your thoughts are on this macOS fixer. Tell me if you're going to be updating your laptop 
you know, right now? Or are you going to like wait a few weeks to, you know, see if there are any like, compatibility issues? And I do want to look more into the customizations that you can do on macOS Big Sur, and I might make a video about it too. So be sure to subscribe to my channel so that you won't miss out on any future uploads. And um, I guess that's it for this video. So I will see you guys in another one of my videos. Bye!